I'm Sebastian St. James. Today I will tell you how you could outlive your super and why you could die early if you have an ugly dog. Don't blame me. I didn't choose your dog. Here is the average life expectancy for Australians. That upward line tells us that life expectancy is skyrocketing. Australians on average live to 83.3 years. In Australia, life expectancy has been increasing by an alarming rate. That is a good thing if you refuse to die before high-speed rail is built between Sydney and Melbourne. And I expect that on my 96th birthday. But it's alarming if you don't want to outlive your super. Do you know that the older you are right now, the longer you're likely to live? This is counterintuitive. Crazy talk. It's a concept known as conditional life expectancy. This is Tony Moran, and he's one of my channel members. <coughs> Tony's just had a brand new son, who he calls Pumpkin. Pumpkin is zero years old, and therefore in Australia has a life expectancy of 81.3 years. This is Carl. Carl is 45 years old, so his life expectancy is 82.9 years. There is a problem. I have discovered that some of my channel members may not be quite as young in real life as they appear in my photos. <laughs> this is what Gorov wants you to think he looks like. But in reality, he's a 95 year old man. <laughs> which means his life expectancy is 98.1 years. Based on the Australian data, the older you are right now, the longer you're likely to live. And that's what this table shows. Yes! Conditional life expectancy. But to understand this, we need to attend a dog show. Oh, I just got some thanks from Elmo. Thank you very much, Elmo. That was very kind of you. This is the most prestigious dog show in the world. Welcome to the pause and applause. I'm excited! Let's meet the contestants. Tim has an Australian Shepherd, who he calls Tiger. Oh, what a good looking dog. Robert owns a Rippleback Winkle Hound, which I don't think I'm familiar with. And this is his dog, Wrinkles. Oh, that's nice. That's different. Unusual. Steve owns a Shetland Sheepdog. And this is his dog, Duchess. Hoi Mai owns a Dachshund. And this is his dog, Stretch. <laughs> and if you want to see what you look like in my world, just become one of my channel members. If you understand this dog show, you will understand why the older you are right now, the longer you're likely to live. Let the show begin. In the competition for ribbon number one, there are a hundred dogs. The chance of winning this ribbon is 1%. Which mutt will make the first cut? And the Bark Ugly ribbon goes to Wrinkles! Robert, you must be so proud. Oh, I just got a thanks from Elmo via Pay ID. Thank you very much, Elmo. Elmo's asked the question whether it's a good idea to borrow to invest in stocks. Magnify your returns. And that question I will answer in the next video. By the way, how do you get your questions answered on my channel? Well, your thanks and channel membership push your questions to the top of the queue. Cool. Yes! Round two. The field has narrowed. Half the dogs have been sent home. There are now only 50 dogs. Oh, so the chance of winning is 2%. That's double the chance of winning the first ribbon. The winner of the Sniff of Sophistication ribbon is Stretch. <laughs> Ribbon number three. Oh, there's only 10 dogs now, so the chance of winning is 10%. And the winner of the Golden Bone Ribbon is Tiger. Here it is, this is the final ribbon. There are two dogs left in the competition, so your chance of winning is 50%. The winner of the Positively Stunning Award is Duchess. Well done, Steve. All your hard work has paid off. You should now understand why the older you are right now, the longer you're likely to live. Or you've just realised you want a new dog. <laughs> the 
The question is, what was the chance that Wrinkles was going to win the Positively Stunning ribbon? Because they're in order, he would have to not win the Bark Ugly, not win the Sniff, the Golden, to finally winning the Paws. That's a lot of opportunities for him to be knocked out of the competition. What is the chance that Pumpkin will live to 98? Well, he'd have to not die at one, two, three, and all the other ages in between, so the chance of him reaching 98 is tiny. Yes! What was the chance that Duchess would win the final ribbon? Well, by the final round, all the other ribbons had been given out already. There was only two dogs in the competition, so the odds of her winning were 50-50. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And what is the chance that Gorov will live to 98? Gorov is 95 already, so the chance he'll make it to 98, the odds are pretty good. Yes! Suddenly this all makes sense. Oh, I just got a thanks from Stephen Howard. Hi Sebastian, as usual, great content. Here Mr. Steve are too rich for Sapto. He'd like to see in a future video buying shares within your super, like Members Direct or Choice Plus. Thank you very much Stephen. We are on a magical journey going through all the options that you have with your super. And we'll be discussing buying shares directly within your super in a few videos time. When it comes to planning for your retirement, there is a myth. There is a myth. The myth is that you should plan to make your money last until you're 83. See, it's in the graph. So what people think is, well, let's say I retire at 67. I'm going to die at 83, so I only need 17 years of funds. But 83 minus 67 is only 16 years. True, but unless you're planning to die at midnight on your 83rd birthday, we still need to count the extra year. Sweet! Only 17 years? I've got that covered. Here are the latest release of death figures in Australia. Here is the maximum likely age of 80 to 84, and the average Australian dies at 83. The line is longest on the age range, meaning more people die at that age range. Yeah, it's all making sense. But there's a problem. You've been tricked, hoodwinked, into believing a myth. <gasps> this is Dennis, and he's one of my channel members. Dennis has a shameful secret, and so naturally I'm going to tell you all about it. Dennis's mother didn't love him. As a child, Dennis was never allowed to have fun. So Dennis compensates for his childhood by dressing up as a clown every day. <laughs> this is true. I'm not making this up. He keeps a diary of his clowning activities. On day one, he clowned for five hours. The same on day two and day three, only two hours. That's an average of four hours. And this is where we discover the problem with averages. The average is four, but if we look at the table, he never once clowned for four hours. Whoa. Oh, I just got a thanks from Rod James. Thank you very much, Rod. That was a lovely surprise. I still have some more people to thank, and that I will do in my next video. The average Australian lives to the age of 83. But here's the twist. That's not the age you're most likely to die at. Oh, no. Take a look at the range from 85 to 89. And we notice the bar, the number of people that have died at that age is actually even longer. Ooh. And from 90 to 94, well, there are fewer people, but that line is still pretty long. Yes. 95 to 99, well, it's less likely, but it's still plausible. 100 and above, well, statistically it's unlikely. Ah, I see the problem. The average Australian life expectancy is 83, so people plan for 17 years to cover that. But in reality, you're more likely to die in the 85 to 89 range, and therefore you need 23 years of funds. And it's even plausible to die between 90 and 94, which you need 28 years of funds. Of course, how many years you plan for is up to you, but I've given you the data that you need. Yes! You've done an excellent job describing the problem, Sebastian. But given our new knowledge, how can we make sure our money will last? And what should be my drawdown rate in retirement? And what about the mandatory drawdown rate that the government sets for super? Is that going to ruin my life?
That we will find out in part two of this gripping video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out.